Hey everyone, welcome to Journey to the West. I'm Jay and I'm here with co-host Sen. Hi everyone, I'm Sen. And we're going to talk about a couple of topical things today. First off, we're going to start with uh, some commentary on the Aquaman film. And then we're going to seg into something really disturbing that happened recently, which is the murders and uh, attacks on Chinese men at a buffet in Brooklyn. So first, let's start with Aquaman. Uh, Disclaimer, none of us have actually seen this film. So this is mostly based on some stills or some images that we saw of the film. Uh, I recently came across this this image of Ludi Lin. He plays Merc. Uh, he did not look either like the character in the comics or like himself at all. Uh, he didn't even look Asian. And that was a bit disturbing because, okay, I understand that they want to go with an underwater theme for people's looks and everything, but his was taken to an extreme that the other characters or the other more major characters were not. Uh, not only was he given blonde hair and wore those blue contacts, but they also made his features more gaunt and like sickly looking. Nobody else got that treatment. He just looked kind of like a like an Aryan ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> Which was fucking weird and and unnecessary. Like I understand that he's supposed to to play more of a villainous character in here, but there are other characters who are supposedly the bad guys, and they don't look like fucking subhuman things, creatures. It's it's just strange to me, and it just I can't help but think that this is some weird form of whitewashing. Because you can't tell if you weren't aware that that was him, that this was an Asian person. And so that one's very disturbing. Uh, I think I mean, we were talking about this earlier and said, it was like, why didn't they just cast a white actor if you wanted that person to be this white? It's, it's baffling to me. It's like a weird type of whitewashing because they technically score the diversity points for the film but in practice it doesn't look anything like an asian person like so i don't know why they would get at that honestly because like i think the film from you know the lead momoa's standpoint was he was trying to promote this film as a movement for uh, Polynesian and just any islanders, you know, like a film as monumental as Black Panther was. Like mm-hmm. that's what he was trying to, like as a cultural shift or like a representation win for them. But like, I mean, we haven't watched it, so, you know, disclaimer there again, but it just strikes to me as very odd that, this whole diversity, inclusion, representation thing, and, like, this was, like, such a glaring thing that they overlooked. And, the yeah, the film was hyped up so much and and so well, actually, by him that I was kind of excited to see this. And after hearing some reviews from friends who were like, what did I even see? Uh, In the sense that, okay, the only visible major non-white character in this film. I'm not going to count Merc because he straight up looks like a white dude. Is is Black Manta and he's made out to be like the one of the main villains. Mm. So it's kind of like a bunch of white people versus <laughs> the one person yeah. of color. The ethnics. Uh yeah. White versus ethnics. Oh, God. White versus ethnics, and then, like, they dehumanize. It feels like dehumanizing Ludi Lin's character. Because even Black Manta doesn't look like a fucking undead person. He, he looks like a normal person in a suit. Uh, 
or like King Orm, who Merc serves. He's got the the blonde hair and blue eyes treatment too, but he doesn't even he doesn't look like he's sickly. I I just feel like they went out of their way to make Merc and consequently the one Asian man in the film not look like a person, like to take away his humanity a bit, which is kind of sad. But I also feel like that's kind of, that's the price that you pay for having visibility. Like you don't really have control over that, which is why it's just not a good idea to invest in portrayals of of us that promise to be positive because like, I don't know, I guess it's good for his career that he landed this job. But this is not Asian representation to me. It's just a paycheck to the actor. Mm. And like, like honestly, I don't even think would this really help his career because they'll be like, oh, he's interesting. And they find out he's an Asian guy. <laughs> like, I don't know if they hire him based on just his acting chops when he doesn't look anything like his character in real life either and it's just it's also completely unnecessary because if you look at the comics uh the character merc is actually totally different look he has dark hair so they didn't they wouldn't have had to change that if they wanted to just make him look a little more fishy (laughs) as you do um they could have just you know changed his outfit if they really were sold on the eye color thing, then just make the make everybody wear the contacts, but don't change their hair color. Because like, how does it make sense for people who canonically have a variety of different uh, looks to just be molded to the weird Aryan look? I don't know. It's just some people have suggested to me privately that this is some kind of white supremacist film. But it basically communicates that message. And uh, I would have to see it to really pick that out and, and analyze it in that way. But definitely some red flags going on with the way that they styled Ludi Lin compared to everybody else that he co-stars with. So food for thought. And I'm just frustrated that a lot of people are praising this as representation when it definitely falls short. Oh my God. It's like, are you fucking blind? He doesn't even look Asian. How is it Asian representation? What the fuck? You know? I I mean, I think people are uh, understandably desperate to to see somebody who looks like them, but like, if if he's not, if if he's not represented as an Asian person, then... That doesn't oh, count. Uh, representation, Ludi Lin, and it's like he looks like a white guy. Are you stupid? <laughs> uh, he's like, I mean, he gets his paycheck. He gets pay. Great, good for him, I guess. But it's not a win for you, mate. Yeah, it's, it's also mm. not a movement. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna doubt that the actor feels like Momoa feels like very genuine about it. I mean, I'm it. sure he's proud. Entirely misplaced. Yeah, I just I don't think that the film itself did any of those things that were claimed. Anyway, moving on to something that we know a little bit more about, but also way more serious. Uh, there were very, very recent, but at the time that we're recording this, murders and attacks on. Asian men at a Chinese buffet in Brooklyn. So this white guy comes in with a hammer and basically murders one of the chefs. Um, He goes on to also injure, critically injure the owner of the restaurant and I believe the manager as well. And there's a lot to unpack from this. Um, well, I guess we can start with the irresponsible reporting. I know Sen had a lot of feelings about this. Uh, she actually brought up that publications like the New York Post framed the word killer in quotes as though 
it was alleged, even though this man was obviously a murderer, which is kind of fucked up. Yeah, I saw yeah, I saw people like retweet or like screenshot the post and then retweet like like going, What the fuck is this this even mean? And I was like, Oh for are you for fucking real? But once again the the reporting's been pretty shit. I also noticed that I mean, it's not like this is a surprise to any of us, but like they never actually racialize a perpetrator who's mm-hmm. white because they always racialize like the victim or the other in this case, or what they consider the other. It's not even considered race baiting at this point because the guy he targeted um, Chinese Asian people, you know, because he has like a lot of malice and racism towards them. Yeah, he even specifically said that he had a problem with Asian men. And while he was in the restaurant, he told Latino employees, I'm not here for you. So clearly this was a planned and targeted attack specifically against Asian men. And uh, the reason that he gave when he was being interrogated was that uh, he said Asian women were being treated poorly by their men. And that's why he had a problem with Asian men. He apparently saw this film that showed the mistreatment of Chinese women and that uh, inspired him to take his hammer to the nearest place where he knew there would be Asian men to just murder some Asian men. And I just really hate how the whole mental illness angle keeps being played here because even if he wasn't of sound mind, that doesn't necessarily make you racist. And that's not an excuse for targeting somebody for violence because of their race. Um, Also, mental health advocates and statistics will tell you that uh, people who have mental health issues by and large aren't actually violent or threats to people. So it's not really a valid excuse. Like being mentally ill doesn't necessarily make you make you racist. It's not a free pass for it. Kind kind of like taking Ambien is not a free pass for saying and doing racist shit. That that's not an excuse. So this is very clearly a hate crime. It's clearly racially motivated. The man stated so himself. So there shouldn't be an argument there, and I hope that when they do prosecute him, that it is definitely as a hate crime. Um, but another th- problem with the reporting is that every news outlet keeps trying to spin a story or a narrative that centers the white murderer, which is not a surprise. <laughs> but in doing so, they brush over the victims and their families who are suffering the most right now. I don't think it's important to unpack the motivations of what, you know, was clearly a a hate crime, but I think it's important to make sure that these families are getting the help that they need. And uh, I'm just incredibly disappointed that that's not happening at all right now. Yeah, it, it seems like very largely like oh, sociopathic. I'm not going to say almost because it is. It's kind of like this this goal that they all have, you know, journalists always trying to spin like some like grandiose, overly dramatized story of this like this white man who's actually mentally disturbed and or oh, when he was a kid he was abused or some like some bullshit they're probably going to try to elicit some kind of like you know what a what a tragic plight of the for this man like Like, sympathy and there's no real yeah yeah there's no sympathy there's no humanity given other than oh chinese man dies two other chinese men are critically you know injured or like in hospital right now fighting for their lives like not not even like that type of lip service like they're not afforded any kind of humanity it's like all like the you know 
humanness is given to the perpetrator. And like, like you look at the guy in his fucking stretcher, he looks like smug as shit, you know? Oh, it's so annoying. Like, not even pictures of, like, you know, the people who were injured. I mean, I don't want to get into the ethics of mm-hmm. that, but, you know, it's just, like, not even a human face to, you know, these, you know, Chinese people. Like, I don't know. And, like, I, I know that it is kind of common procedure for the media to be shit and focus on the the criminals. But I also feel like in in this case, as with many cases involving Asians specifically, that we are just so far removed from being relatable uh, to a white audience that like they don't even bother. You know, it, it takes special effort or you really notice when people go out of their way to highlight uh, Asian victims as humans or as people. There are a lot of people, like, I know this is kind of like a complex issue of reporting and just, you know, us consuming news in general. But, like, when we, you know, expose, like, a criminal's face and name and whatever, like, there is a purpose to it, like, trying to catch the guy. But they obviously had this guy already apprehended. So was there, like, a real need to, like, publicize his face and, like, like go oh he's on a stretcher he's getting sent to like a psychiatric like institution to be evaluated or whatever like it's just like i don't know was that even like necessary no because all Uh this is so fucking extra you know i guess another one of the big things which was like like a huge issue with asian twitter is that um people were pointing out that this is basically a direct result or indirect result of the prevailing Orientalist narrative and idea that Asian men are just these evil patriarchal beings who abuse Asian women. And therefore it is justified that this man went out and played white savior and murdered these Asian men because like without that narrative being pushed, there would be no reason for him to cite it. Or, or not even just that, but going, Oh, it was definitely misplaced and abused, but actually this Asian patriarchy is a thing and it's like, it's like this is this like that's shut the fuck up about that shit. And like give your fucking Save your sympathies and your fucking words on your shitty Twitter for, like, the victim and the families. And, like, the this is, like, a this is a hate crime. You should be all over yeah. this in that sense. Well, you know? it's, it's blue checks, man. <sighs> There's a lot of uh, online activists who, who make their living preaching. And it just feels like rather than addressing the issue for what it is, they're trying to turn this into a way to defend things that they have said or done previously that may have contributed to the problem, which is pretty self-serving and unfortunate. Like you don't need to dress up your defense in, in, you know, fancy glittery words to, to fucking, protect yourself right you're not the one who needs protecting (laughs) you're not the one who got bashed over the head with a hammer uh priorities i mean i i did say this earlier they would never be caught these bougie motherfuckers would never be caught seafood buffet yeah uh (laughs) at (laughs) never you never see these motherfuckers you know they'll they'll talk all about oh i support asian business and like i care about the working class community you'll never see them like around these enclaves and shit yeah it's just yeah they're just so far removed from the reality of what it's like to be somebody who who would be in such direct danger because their lives their daily lives do not, you don't cross paths with that kind of person. Like I live in an area where 
Asian homes are being targeted for robbery because of the stereotypes, the racial stereotypes about Asians. Like uh, my boyfriend was actually almost followed home if he wasn't, you know, smart enough to call the cops and wait and not lead the guy to our apartment (laughs) because he was Asian and he made an easy target according to this person who wanted to rob him. Like this shit happens every day to everyday Asian people. And just to watch somebody sit on their high horse and pretend that this isn't a problem and have the convenience to like pontificate about it in a way that doesn't acknowledge that there are Asian men who are actually in danger of losing their lives and that this isn't some kind of widespread problem, and then trying to blame it on the patriarchy. Okay. They have such an easy time calling out the so-called Asian patriarchy that when Asian men are being murdered, they can't call out white patriarchy. It, It has to be the generalized patriarchy. That, you know, toxic masculinity was to blame for this white man uh, absorbing oriental shit and murdering Asian men. Why can't you call out white people? Yeah, they can't even emulate emotions. <laughs> like, you can't even fake it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Spirited. But, because this, this isn't just, oh, he just hates Asian people. This is, he's absorbed orientalism. And I think a lot of us do propagate this, like, these orientalist ideas you know and let's not pretend that you know asian men can't be patriarchal or misogynistic like it's definitely a thing but it's not some like mystical or traditional type of like patriarchy that we've never seen before and it's unique to every like asian man that we see or it's just some mm. inherent thing in their DNA because it's not. And like when you talk about like misogyny and say the patriarchy in regards to say the Asian community, you just have to be aware of not falling into these like Orientalist type of narratives and also making sure that you're having these conversations with the right people in front of the right audience and not just trying to like play this game of where like you're trying to like you know dibby dob on like oh these people they're so mean to me like that type of bullshit because it's it's kind of what it, it sounds like to me but uh like i've said i've been reading about you know the histories and stuff the type of thinking that this man has had and like a lot of other people have been proliferating isn't any different from what um they advocated when uh chinese people in the u.s were first uh, Mm -hmm. immigrating over because um during the gold rush that was it the gold rush or i mean that was that was was it the gold rush or like the railroads uh they're around the same time. Oh, okay. I would say railroad is probably the the more sign- significant one. Later, I gotta get my timeline mm-hmm. straight. Because they had the gold rush, like a gold rush in Australia, and that's why there were Chinese um, workers that came over. That's why I was like, "Oh, am I getting confused?" But anyway, um, mm. oh, we also had one in America as well. Um, what I remember of that is that a lot of Chinese workers were or Chinese miners were robbed. Like they would mine the gold and then some white people would be like, uh, this is mine. And what are you going to do and about just it? take it. I was like, go yeah, to the cops? Like, they had no recourse. Yeah. But okay. Anyway, going back to the thing. When Chinese people first arrived in the US and like the obvious little of animosity, they would, you know, find a multitude of reasons why, you know, Chinese were, like, the L's of society. So, like, saying they were diseased, saying they were all going to rape all white women, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, one of the, the, you know, their excuses, which 
was actually formed policy, like policy and legislation later on, was the fact that uh, Chinese men were uniquely patriarchal to a point where they could not conceive that any Chinese woman would willingly immigrate to America to be a wife of sorts. I mean, let's not deny that there was like a, a problem with prostitution because they only allowed immigration for uh, uh, Chinese men uh-huh. for the longest time. But they did deny um, Chinese women entry because they didn't want family formation, for one. But anyway, um, they did propagate a lot of, like, you know, stupid stereotypes and, like, just racist rhetoric. So the way they would deny women, it was, like, through immigration was, like, they would just assume by default that all Chinese women were prostitutes, for one. and then. And then secondly, it soon got to a point where they were just like, well, even if they are wives, they're just basically slaves anyway. So they just couldn't imagine a woman willingly being married to a Chinese man Mm -hmm. on any capacity. And because of that, and because of like the whole prostitution thing, they enacted like the Page Act of uh, was it 1875? I, I believe I forget, but it, it just blocked um, Chinese women from entering the country on the basis of Chinese men being uniquely patriarchal and to quote unquote protect Chinese women, which is obviously bullshit. But that's what they did, and then that also formed the like again that was like the first piece of legislation in America that discriminated based on gender and race. And then they later passed the uh, Chinese Exclusion Act, which is the more well-known act. Mm-hmm. But there was a precedent before this. But it was in the guise of trying to protect, you know, Chinese women. But it yes. wasn't, obviously. Because they were just fucking racist. I think a lot of what people don't understand is that the, the whole point of the emasculation of Asian men is not about sex. Especially if you trace these laws back, it's about power. It's about preventing Asians from having any kind of community and or any kind of racial or ethnic communities because the women weren't allowed to come over here or like with them. So they weren't able to start Asian families. And no, they they blocked women before they blocked the men. That that is usually how it happened. It it, it also happened when they allowed immigration of Japanese people because um, when when Japanese men were allowed, well, they weren't allowed in the country because of some legislation. I forget the words. You can look it up. But then they, they uh, before they actually like totally blocked everybody, they, they stopped, um, you know, brides from coming over. And they also did it in the guise of we're protecting Japanese mm-hmm. women from these patriarchal Japanese men because – um, back in the day, you know, arranged marriages were a thing and they would do so by like sending each other photos of each other and maybe writing a letter and the parents would like, you know, match make them that way. And But because mm-hmm. they accused um, Japanese men um, because the women would be sending over photos that they were soliciting prostitution, that the, the wives and the brides were literally just prostitutes again. So this was another instance of like, oh, the prostitutes, we better protect the women's and bullshit. And then I think that was called the ladies agreement, I believe. And then, yeah, ladies and gentlemen's agreement. You can look that up. Yeah, you've been pretty good so far. Like you even got the right year for the page act. Fuck, I was so pissed. That's probably why I remembered it. But anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, ladies' agreement, definitely. Yeah, so you guys can do your further reading. I'm not bullshitting here. <laughs> but, but yeah, so there there is a long history of structural oppression targeting very specifically, as we've been talking about, Asian men in order to prevent them from having any kind of power under this institution. Uh, hand in hand with that, it was... Uh, Asian men and, well, Asian people in general were not allowed to own property 
for a while, didn't have suffrage for a while either, uh, were relegated to jobs like you know, cooking and cleaning, dry cleaning, restaurants for, for the longest time because anything else would be too dangerous and too threatening, right? Which is kind of cordoned off. Yeah, I actually did read that the woman's work, as they called it, even slaves, like uh, black slaves didn't even like do that. So it's like a very deliberate process of like, not just push them out of certain job mm-hmm. markets, but also like emasculating them in a sense. Plus there was no women around. So, but the thing is like the prevailing image that they were promoting mm-hmm. was still that they were going to rape everybody like the white women and they were like patriarchal but now that we exist now that asian men exist on a weird continuum where they're simultaneously patriarchal rapists Mm -hmm. but they're also emasculated small dicked like not real men type of thing so it obviously doesn't make sense that Mm -hmm. these two images would exist simultaneously but because of how like it shifted Because, oh, now they finally allowed the ethnics in, like, Western civilization, they have to find new ways to marginalize and, like, deny uh, people humanity. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, humanity and agency and power. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you are ascribed any kind of stereotype, that removes your agency because you don't get to be a person. You just get to be the stereotype, no matter what you do. Uh, even if you defy said stereotypes, the purpose of the stereotype is to strip you of your power and your agency and your humanity. So the goals are going to keep moving, uh, which is why it's. I hope that people understand that you need to destroy the structure, not try to view these racial stereotypes are something to overcome. Like your Asian is, is, is a disease or a hurdle that you have to jump over for success. Like that's not how that shit works. Because if the purpose is to keep you powerless, then there will always be a way for the system, the systemic structure to fucking knock you down. That's why you need to destroy it. Uh, I also want to briefly talk about different types of violence because relating all of this back to the murders the murder for instance that's an example of direct violence like somebody is taking direct action but those were justified by both cultural or symbolic violence which is the narrative the orientalist narrative that asian men are both easy targets because they're weak, but also both oppressors of Asian women. Uh, thirdly, there's structural violence, which is systemic. It's basically what we were just talking about, the, the history of laws that governments have passed in order to strip power and agency from Asians. And all of these things together form the oppression that Asian men face. I mean, obviously we can generalize this because this applies to to any oppressed people. But in this specific case, that symbolic or cultural violence, whenever somebody says, I wish death upon Asian men, like that contributes to the overall structure of violence. It basically is the excuse or the reason that justifies the structural oppression because one, it says that Asian men are not oppressed, but are in fact the oppressors. So they don't need protection from oppression, from oppression. And it also justifies direct violence against Asian men because it says, Oh, Asian men are actually threatening. So here's your, your reason. If you need a reason to harm an Asian man, here is why all of these stereotypes. And this is just a great example of how those things work together and create real harm in the world. So like 
it's not just about media. It's not just about laws and it's not just about, you know, people getting assaulted and killed. It's all of these things together. And you can't say that one is worse than the other. You can't say that any of them are unrelated because they're all interconnected. And that's just something that I hope people understand when incidents like this happen they're not random events. There's a cause and effect, and it's all part of a system designed to continuously harm you. Um, anyway, I would like to elaborate a little bit more on kind of the nature of power and these power structures in a later pod, but we just wanted to talk about these recent incidents because they were just so topical and so disturbing to us that we wanted to get it out there and also assert that, you know, if you want to be an actual Asian feminist and you're not somebody who is here to condemn Asian men without any goal in mind, if you actually want to fix problems in our communities, then we have to come together in good faith. And I don't see a lot of good faith out there, and especially not from the people who are responding to these incidents of violence against Asian men. Um, we're working on moving forward a new consciousness and a new ideology that is actually based on equity and mutual respect. But uh, until then, I would say try to avoid the people who aren't here in good faith. And it's pretty easy to tell when they are and when they're not. Uh, Sen, did you have anything else to add? When these incidents come up and the first response is not like, not just outrage, but just sympathy for the victims and like the person is just trying to defend their ideologies you just need to take a second look you know mm. that's all i have to say about this really well uh thanks for listening thanks for bearing with our new schedule this new year uh we hope you found this informative let us know what you think in the comments if you want to and um stay tuned for our next episode